Today I'm making barbecue and I wasn't going to do this video because I know that people can be very passionate about barbecue and it can be very upsetting to see it done wrong. <laughs> but um, I'm going to show you the easy way to make some barbecue indoors because um, it's cold outside and I'm not going out there. Uh, I'm going to make this in the oven and it's not going to turn out as good as it would if it was pit cooked but uh, pork butts are on sale and um, I just want something that tastes like barbecue to go in the freezer. <laughs> uh, so here's uh, what I did yesterday. I took a pork butt, this is a Boston butt, and I washed it and then I covered it over with some mustard and um, a pork rub and I'll put the recipe for the rub in the description box and I also mixed up some uh, sauce and that's been in the refrigerator overnight as well. Uh, this is going to be an East Carolina style barbecue and that's the other thing about making barbecue. It can be very regional and people can get uh, mighty fussy about it uh, and where I live Barbecue only means one thing, and it's East Carolina style barbecue, uh, which is a minced pork with a vinegar based sauce on it. There is no tomato sauce in this. Uh, and if you've never tried it, uh, a lot of people move here from up north and they just go nuts over the barbecue here. This is all I've known all my life. Couldn't imagine anything different. Uh, and I'm amazed that they don't sell this uh, in other places in the country because we can buy it in the store here in little one pound containers and I'm going to show you how to uh, end up making your barbecue look just like the store bought. Uh, so what I did was covered it with mustard and then I covered it with the rub and I wrapped it in plastic wrap, kept it in the refrigerator overnight. Now I'm going to unwrap it and put it in a roasting pan and roast this at 250 degrees for several hours, pretty much all day long, until it has an internal temperature of uh, between 195-200 degrees. Uh, when the bone will just pull right out of this meat, then it'll be done. So there's what it looks like. Okay, I have it in the pan and I have the fat side on the top. And I'm just going to add a little apple juice to the bottom of the pan so that I don't have a lot of burning going on here. Now, I'm sure that a lot of you are experts at making barbecue, and if you want to tell everybody in the comments section how to do it right, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> but this is the way I'm going to do it, just to get it done. So then I cover the roaster, put it in the oven, and I'll show you what I have when it's done. Okay, it's been about six and a half hours now. I checked the temperature, and... Uh, I assume that it's around 200 degrees. These dial thermometers are usually wrong. I've checked mine against boiling water and I'm about 10 degrees off. So as far as I know, I'm at 200 degrees. And uh, you'll know by pulling on this bone. This bone won't lie. It should come out clean. There we go. That's what I want to see. So now I'm going to put it on this pan so I can uh, pull it apart and let it cool enough so that I can chop it. You see there, nice and tender. If you wanted, you could eat it just like that, pulled pork. You can mince it up with a knife if you want, but I'm going to do something different. Okay, now I'm running the meat through my meat grinder, and I'm using the coarsest blade on this. It's the one with the three prongs. 
and I'm going to grind up every last bit of this meat, fat and all, no waste. And if you uh, just pulled the pork and ate the good stuff, then you'd have about 30% waste on this. And if you don't grind up all the fat along with the pork like this, then it ends up awfully dry. And if you look at the ingredients of the store-bought barbecue, this is what they're doing. And on top of that, they're adding TVP to it, which is a textured vegetable protein that uh, you can use to stretch meats. So that's not all meat that you're getting there. So that's what the barbecue turns out like. And I uh, used half a quart of the sauce on it. You can use as much or as little as you like. Uh, this will keep in the refrigerator. And I used uh, apple cider vinegar in this. Some people use white vinegar, and a lot of people argue about that. But I like the, the cider vinegar. And I also used half of the black pepper that the uh, recipe calls for because I don't want a whole lot of pepper in it. I also used half of the black pepper that the rub calls for. Uh, here's how it turned out. For those of you that know what uh, barbecue looks like around here, it looks like store-bought. And this is the brand that I usually buy and it's better than this. Uh, it's not as good as a pit cook barbecue, but it's better than anything you'll buy in the store. So for those of you who have never had this, you can serve it on a plate uh, just like this. Usually served with coleslaw, french fries, baked beans, hush puppies, that sort of thing. Or you can make a sandwich with it. Just put some on a hamburger bun along with some coleslaw. You'll love it. Uh, when you want to use this, all you have to do is put it in a pan and heat it up. If it's a little dry to keep it from burning, you can add just a little water. Uh, like I said, most people that come here fall in love with this barbecue. Um, like I said, it's not quite as good as pit cook, but a whole lot better than anything you're going to buy. And uh, I didn't have to suffer in the heat or the cold for it. Hope it helps.